Hey guys, King Kaiju here, and today we're going to be doing another Kaiju review. As you can see, the setup is the painted one this time around, because I've actually been filming something over the last two days. However, I thought I would film a Kaiju review to kind of satisfy y'all's need for it. And today we're going to be doing a figure that I did promise we'd do. The original 1974 Mechagodzilla. After adjusting a little bit, I think we're ready to go. And of course, this figure is a very, very nice model. First of all, this is from Bandai Creations, not normal Bandai. However, this is regarded as one of their best, if not their best figure. This figure has kind of became rare over the years, but I do think Playmates reissued it. However, this is my original release that I got back in the early 2010s. And still to this day, it holds up as one of the best figures in my collection. And of course, today we're going to review him. Starting off with detail. Now bringing Mechagodzilla closer up to the camera, you can see that this figure is coated in details, and this is a reason why this figure is so nice. Not only does it capture all the mechanical detail that the original suit had, it also looks like a suit. If I bring him in even closer, you can kind of see that there's wrinkles all along his stomach right there that look as if, yes, this is in fact a rubber suit, which I really, really like. Now, I do appreciate Bandai figures that look like actual creatures, However, I also appreciate them for looking like a guy in a suit to kind of stay traditional to what I love most, the gimmicky Showa era films. There isn't a single area of this figure that's not unpainted. Every part that should be painted is painted as good as it possibly can. So yeah, detail on this guy is very, very good. I shouldn't have to say that though. Now you probably do notice the figure is a little bit damaged, uh, specifically right here at the knee. I've had this figure for a while, and of course, as a kid, you know, you bash your figures together to simulate them fighting. And yeah, this figure right here has definitely gotten the brink of some of it. Also, yes, I do have the kitties in here right now, so they may come up here and try and mess with me while I'm filming a little bit. Of course, though, this guy is also packed with articulation, my favorite one being at the head up here. He can spin it all the way around to simulate that shield effect that he did in the first film. His arms can move all 360 degrees, as well as his legs, although they are notably a little bit tighter. Both of them can, so they can simulate walking. And of course, he can raise up his arms so that he can pretend he's shooting something. His waist, you can turn it all the way around. It goes 360 degrees, just like everything else. So you can kind of get him looking forward with his head looking towards you and his fingers up as if he's about to shoot at something. And yeah, I think that is a very, very cool look for Mechagodzilla. Of course, moving him to the side means we're about to go into sizing. Now, while I do not have a Mechagodzilla Godzilla, I do have a Destroy All Monsters one, the 1968 Godzilla, which of course is a little bit taller. Now, Mechagodzilla was actually much bigger than Godzilla in the film. He was about a head taller than him. However, I still think that this looks okay. You know, I don't know why this guy specifically is so tall. However, you know, you could get these guys to fight off, and it looks pretty nice. Going with something that's probably a little bit more accurate, here is another monster that kind of simulates that suit effect that I was talking about, Antlar. Antlar here is, of course, an Ultraman monster, but I do feel as if this guy is something else that kind of resembles that suit effect that I was talking about with Mechagodzilla. Of course, Antlar here, though, would be getting the crap kicked out of him. And finally, we'll compare him off to a monster that he kind of did fight in his original outing, Anguirus. Now, of course, this is the Final Wars variant. This is not the Showa era Anguirus, but still, it applies, and yeah, they look pretty good next to each other. And yeah, that's Mechagodzilla's review. Very, very nice figure, and if you can get your hands on it for a cheap price, I don't recommend paying upwards of 30 bucks for it. This guy is a fantastic figure to have. Very, very nice, very, very cool look to him, and I would 100% recommend. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.